Welcome to part two of the quick course in feeds and speeds. In this part, we'll demo GWizard to show how to put all the concepts together that were introduced in part one. If you missed part one, it's available on the CNC cookbook website under the videos tab. All right, for starters, here we are in GWizard and we're looking at the feeds and speeds tab. Important thing to keep in mind is it's real straightforward. You just read from left to right and top to bottom filling in the numbers as you go. So let's take a look at what the different areas are that we have. Uh, in this top bar we have the ability to select a machine and you can define more machines in the setup tab where we have machine profiles. We have a materials list here where you can pick from uh, a variety of different materials. I'm going to stay with the uh, 6061 aluminum. Um, Different tools are selected over here. These are the generic tool types. You also have the ability to uh, customize the tool selection based on what's in your tool crib. That could correspond to what's in the tool changer of a CNC machine or whatever. I'm going to stick with the generic tools uh, for this demo, but if you want to learn more about the tool crib, we have a video for that too. Now the second row here is called the tool definition and it contains for example the diameter you can choose from a drill index if you're working with twist drills or just want to have a diameter uh, that's based on uh, standard drill twist drill sizes your number of flutes do you have a ball nose or a rougher uh, rougher being the sort of corn cob style uh, roughing end mills uh, your stick out this is the distance from the tip of the cutting tool uh, to the tool holder, the end of the tool holder, so the amount of exposed uh, cutter there. Uh, that's very important for our cut optimizers tool deflection calculations. Um, next row is called the cut definition and we have your depth or your axial width of cut. It tells you what percentage of the diameter of the tool that is. Your cut width or radial engagement, again the percent is there. There's a button that lets you quickly select full slotting uh, and then there are the two cut optimizer buttons and we'll get into how you use those more in a second. Then the last row here is the uh, the result row and it gives you your your desired spindle speed and your feed rate based on these other parameters. Uh, note that I've also got a little hint here telling me that for this particular cut I want to use conventional milling. It's interesting, a lot of CNCers grow up on the idea that they should climb mill everything, but it turns out that uh, in certain cutting conditions where you're taking a very high percentage of the width of cut, you actually don't want to climb mill. It forces your cutter into a, a negative rake sort of a geometry, and so GWizard will tell you when you should use conventional versus climb milling in that sort of a situation. I want to call your attention to this button here marked advanced. GWizard remembers a lot of different settings. It will, for example, remember the last machine you were on, the material you last selected, and it remembers the status of the advanced button. And if you press it, you get all sorts of additional information in these four columns. Uh, the first column is a set of limits. You normally would set your limits using, again, your machine profile where you tell it for example, what's the maximum RPM of your spindle, your spindle horsepower, your maximum feed rate, so on and so forth. But if it's convenient, you can choose to override the limits here as well uh, on the spur of the moment. We've got uh, details of the cut, so your surface speed that's actually being recommended, your chip load, uh, your, your feed rate in terms of inches per revolution, uh, and we have uh, chip thinning calculations here. So, for example, uh, what happens with chip thinning, if you remember from part one of the video, is you actually have to speed up the feed rate if you're taking a very light uh, width of cut, because otherwise you don't actually get the real chip load you thought you did because of the shape of the chips and the geometry of the cut. So what this is, is the adjusted feed per tooth. In order to get this actual chip rate, you have to run at a feed rate that delivers this feed per tooth. Okay. Let's see, we've got a, a little bit of information on your material removal rate, the horsepower required. Note that you can set a horsepower limit in GWizard, and GWizard will simply 
Uh, if it hits the horsepower limit, it will feather back the feed rate until the material removal rate is such that you're within the horsepower limits. That's a very convenient feature sometimes. If you're running on a lighter machine, you might want to kind of derate the horsepower a little bit. Uh, plunge rate, recommended plunge rate for this particular cutter is here. Uh, and then lastly, we have a, a set of uh, fields that make it easy to sort of do a rough estimation of how long a machining operation is going to take. All right, let's do some feeds and speeds. So for my first example, I want to do a slotting operation. And so I'm going to come in. We're going to stick with the uh, 6061. Uh, I want a high-speed steel end mill. Uh, 0.25 inch diameter. Let me just go ahead and enter that in. Uh, let's make it a three flute. I like to use uh, Mari Tools three flutes. They're real nice. Give you, uh, and in this case, I want to do a, a full slot. Like we said, we're doing a slotting cut, and I'd really like to be able to get to a half an inch depth of cut. And so, yeah, our feeds and speeds are all here. It's telling me that uh, I want a spindle RPM of 4,054. Uh, and I've got a, uh, a feed rate selected here of uh, 14.595 inches per minute. So, and you can see if we start taking down the depth, both of those numbers are changing. And in fact, by taking a less aggressive cut, it's going to let us go at a higher RPM uh, or a higher feed rate. And so, uh, let's go back up to our half inch. All right. So it's showing you that, that we're continuously interpolating a whole bunch of different variables here to come up with the appropriate uh, feeds and speeds. A lot more sophisticated than just using a table and a set of simple formulas. But there's something else we want to take a look at while we're here, and that is tool deflection. So we've got a, a quarter inch wide, full slot, uh, half inch depth of cut. And my question is, you know, can I really make that depth of cut and how much tool deflection will I get if I do that? So uh, what you do with the, t with the cut optimizer is you choose to leave one variable fixed, either the width or the depth, and you push the button next to the one you want to optimize. So in this case it's a slot, I've got to leave the width fixed. Uh, so let's try optimizing the depth. And so uh, my cut optimizer comes up and immediately we can see uh, we've got a problem. It's saying the optimized cut depth is less than the desired depth. And for roughing, what I want to do is have a thousandth of an inch or less deflection. Much harder for a finished cut, by the way, where you want two tenths or less. Uh, but in this case, I'm, I'm satisfied to rough, and uh, but I can't get to the, the thousandth of an inch. In fact, as you can see, the best I can get to is uh, an 060 uh, depth of cut. Well, that, you know, that's not really what we're trying to do. So uh, let's see if we can get there by reducing the feed rate somewhat. I can click Optimize Feed Rate and I can try again. And, and the answer is, if I go all the way to a half inch depth of cut, I've got um, I've got over three thousandths of tool deflection, and that is just that's that's just too much. So it's not going to work. It's not going to work for what we want. So let's cancel out of here. We're going to have to make a new plan. Uh, and in this case, I think the thing to do is to, is to try, instead of a high-speed steel, let's try a carbide end mill. Carbide is about three times stiffer than high-speed steel. And it, you know, people think of carbide as, well, that's all about going fast and removing a lot of material. But you should also think about carbide in terms of stiffness uh, in order to fight the tool deflection. All right. So let's let's pop back into our uh, optimizer here, and well, okay, we got a lot closer. We're still not a half an inch. We're, a, we're about 0.35 uh, inches depth of cut. So uh, maybe we'll get there this time. Let's try again a feed rate optimization, and uh, lo and behold, we can actually get there by just dialing back our feet a little bit. And so uh, what we get to, you can see the feed rate is now locked is if we perform this cut, uh, 6,000 RPM, 15.5 feed rate, uh, we will succeed in being able to do that without more than a thousandth of an inch. So that is a really 
handy function to be able to deal with. And you know, just to show you again, so we went from about 18 down to 15 and a half. So we're not even really having to slow down all that much uh, to get the job done. That, that's pretty awesome. Okay, let's try another example. Let's say that we're going to do either some pocketing or some peripheral milling around the outside and we want to take a very light cut. We want to do a little experiment here to understand uh, uh, radial chip thinning and its impact on the cut. So I'm going to keep my half inch depth of cut here and I'm going to reduce my width quite a bit. In fact I want to reduce it to 10 percent of the diameter. So here's a little shortcut that's available. I can just hit uh, 0.25 uh, slash 10 enter and see so you can do math inside the field. So now I'm at a 10% engagement, uh, 0.025, um, take a look at how much our feed rate has increased due to chip thinning. We're now at 30 inches a minute. Uh, you can see that what this is telling us is in order to get to a chip load of a thousandth we actually have to run at a feed rate, given how, how light our cut is, uh, that would, would normally have given us a, a, a 0 .0017 uh, chip load. And you can, you can kind of pop back and forth with this checkbox and see, you know, if I just use the simple formulas and ignore chip thinning, I'd be running at 18 inches per minute instead of the 30. So my chips are, would be coming off about half this 0 .001 and as we saw in part one that can be really bad for tool life if you're not careful so good thing we've got the uh, uh, chip thinning going on. Now let's take a look at our tool deflection. In this case uh, since we're pocketing our, mill our peripheral milling what I like to do is uh, keep the, the cut depth fixed. I mean usually we have a pretty good idea what we want to do here. We want to do some multiple that divides evenly into the depth of the pocket, let's say. And in this case, I'm going to try to catch the whole depth in one pass. And I don't care so much about the width because my CAM program will just make more passes if need be. So let's fire up the tool optimizer on this case and see if we can get away with that. And uh, the answer to our question is, yeah, sure, that's that's not a problem uh, to really get there. In fact, we could uh, we could do even a little better than that, and then, so then let's try uh, let's try optimizing for uh, 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 a finish allowance, uh, two tenths tool deflection instead, and so we can get there uh, with a 0.026 width of cut. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and accept that, and uh, you can see I've got my feed rate, I've got my RPMs here, and I'm I'm pretty much ready to go, and I'm gonna let my cam program worry about how many passes I need to make in order to get there and uh, life will be good. Um, okay, another example. Let's say we were going to do a cut very similar to this one but in this case uh, we're, we're using a ball nose. Uh, and maybe we're going to do some 3D profiling. So uh, let's scale back the depth of cut to uh, something really pretty small for profiling. I'm going to go to uh, uh, ten thousandths and uh, uh, cut width. You know, it really is an interesting question uh, because with a ball nose, it varies when you're at a cut depth less than the radius of the ball. Uh, there's an effective diameter at work, and so. As you know, as soon as I click the ball nose, it brings up the ball nose compensation area, and I can see well my effective diameter on this cut is actually only uh, uh, 98 thousandths. I've got a nice uh, surface finish and scallop height calculator, so I can see if I want a scallop height of a, a ten thousandth of an inch and an RA finish of 100 micro inches. Well, then I'll need a step over of uh, 6.3 thousandths, which is about 2.5 percent of the tool diameter. So everything I need here uh, to be uh, productive on my CAM program is all set up, uh, and I'm ready to go with the with the ball nose. And there's, by the way, there's a similar surface finish calculation available for uh, turning if you select a lathe. We hope you'll give G Wizard a try. Uh, and if you missed out on part one of the video, you, you should take a look at that too. There's some really good theory in there that explains uh, things like chip thinning and why they matter. 
Uh, other than that, thanks very much for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed it.